In this episode, I speak with Summer Sanders, plant-based chef and founder of Local Juicery in Sedona, Arizona. Summer shares her favorite superfoods, why cooking is like sex, how to listen to your body, tips for running your own business, pregnancy, postpartum, beauty rituals, and the difference between craving and what your body really needs. Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. Welcome to the Flower Lounge podcast. I'm excited to be having another Arizona guest on the show. I have with us Summer Sanders, who's an author, plant-based chef, raw food enthusiast, and founder of Local Juicery, an all-organic cold-pressed juice bar and superfood kitchen located in Sedona. We always recommend people to go to Local Juicery when they're going to Sedona. It's one of my favorite places. She is passionate about helping people bring more vibrant plant-based foods into their diets in delicious and exciting ways. Summer is known for her innovative recipes, which by the way, there are a ton of on her blog. I would go check that out. And simple laid back cooking style. She believes food should be fun, sensual, and filled with love and greens. She's contributed to the Chalkboard Mag, Our Body Books, The Car Life, Mind Body Green, and many more. She lives in Sedona um, with her husband and five-year-old son, Henry. And again, for fresh recipes and unique spins on healthy living, full body, and mind, wellness, and motherhood, you can visit her website at strongandradiant.com. Super excited to have you with us finally, Summer. I'm excited to be on here. I've listened to like so many of your other episodes. So, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Very that's awesome. Well, then you know that we start out with this little exercise where you close your eyes and go back to a time in your childhood <laughs> when you played around flowers, okay. plants, or trees. And just think about what you were up to, who you were with, wait, and then see if you can identify a favorite flower or botanical and reflect mm. on the three words that you would use to describe its personality. So, yeah, share, share, share. <laughs> My godfather is an organic farmer and he had an obsession with morning glories and he would grow like these there were almost like little pathways like over chicken wire <laughs> and you could crawl underneath them. And so I remember as a kid loving those. The blue ones. Okay. Yeah. And some were purple and they were so beautiful. And I love how they open up with the morning. I love that. It's, it's they're magnificent to me. I think the three things I think of with them are vibrant uh, shy and they're also medicinal so hmm. those would be the those would be the three awesome so <laughs> does vibrant shy and medicinal describe the way you bring your greatest gifts into the world in some ways yes <laughs> <laughs> are yes. you shy I am I am I'm very much a hermit I am definitely on the shy side <laughs> what's your sign I'm a Capricorn with a Pisces rising, Aries men. <laughs> that's a great combination. Hmm. So nice. And you're pregnant right now with your second I am child. pregnant. I am. Yes. I'm about almost seven months now. <sighs> so you're feeling it. It's a daily feeling I, it. it. I feel it different each day. So today it is moving a lot <laughs> really <laughs> a lot of, a lot of bladder kicks <laughs> Ow, well. i'll try to sit still this whole this whole time <laughs> okay well we we won't keep you so long so i have so many different questions for you it's funny that i don't get i don't have it's funny i don't get to see you more often since we're actually not that far away um no <laughs> but okay so one of my questions for you of the many is speaking from someone who's also an entrepreneur and also busy. For some reason, when I go to Asia, 
I come back and I feel like cooking is so easy and simple and fun and fast and effortless. And it's such a, like, no problem to like plan things out and have the right ingredients. But then when I've like lived in the U S without traveling to Asia for some reason, it becomes kind of Mm -hmm. like a chore and the busier I get, the more, it just feels like a chore to do all the planning and shopping. And I'm yeah. sure there are a lot of people out there like like that. What do you recommend when you get to that point where you're just like, ah? I mean, since you're like wanting totally. to make cooking like fun and beautiful and sensuous. Yeah. And- totally. Well, you know, that happens to me too. So it's, I feel like, especially for people (laughs) who are working a lot, you come home and you're just like exhausted. But I always get inspired by going to farmer's markets or taking it out of like the grocery store. And I also really like to play with not planning so much because when I have to stick to a plan, it often takes the inspiration out of it for me. So what I'll do is like a light plan. I'll have like, well, I know we're going to want greens and salads. So I'll get lots of greens and, and salad stuff. And I know we'll want some kind of good carbohydrate, you know? So I do like a, a more relaxed plan when I start to feel less inspired. I feel like opening up the box a little bit and making it, you know, more about the experience of, Oh, I saw this on a blog and I really want to play with this recipe today or someone mentioned this and, and then just getting into the kitchen and kind of setting the stage too. So putting on a good playlist or something that makes you happy and maybe eating a little chocolate or something, if you have a (laughs) glass of wine, whatever it is that gets you in the mood. It's kind of like sex (laughs) in a way you have to like, you know, once you've been doing it for a long time in the same way, you have to play with it and make it a little bit more interesting. So I've also like played around with different cuisine types. I think that's really fun to do too, but I know it can get really hard when you're working so much. And I've also, you know, once in a while, I'll order food from like Saqqara Life. And that is helpful once in a while to just be like, I need a break. I need a week. Or, you know, there's, there's meal delivery kits and some of them are like hundred percent organic. And I think it's okay to have burnout because we're all human. And to just, you know, kind of roll with it. And if you can't find that you're able to be inspired, then take a little break. Or hit the basics. Or have your family help, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Once in a while, my husband will, I usually do the food, but once in a while, he'll be like, I think I'll do food tonight. I can, he can tell when I'm burnt out. And then, like, his meals are so plain. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got it. You inspired me. But I just <laughs> do it. <laughs> But it's really sweet that he does it. <laughs> um, so just for the listener's sake, I'm just going to say a yeah. couple of the recipes that you have that I saw that were like, oh my God, I could just dive right in and make those right now. Um, cool. Oh, and I love that you categorize your blog by season, meal type, and diet. I think oh, that's thank such you. a great resource. But cordyceps and rose chocolate almond butter cups. Oh my those God. Those are really good. <laughs> Raw vegan cheesecake. <laughs> chocolate hazelnut tart I think I picked all the sweet things that one is really (laughs) and pretty easy too really yeah it is pumpkin (laughs) hemp seed milk cleansing tonics and smoothies like all kinds of yummy stuff so definitely check out the recipes on her blog and you also have the book raw and radiant and you have a new book coming out this year I do well hopefully it's this year fingers crossed it's all done and the pictures are all shot so we're just kind of putting it together now (laughs) So what, what's the, how does the second book differ from the, the vibe? first? Um, well, I'm not hundred percent raw and I wasn't actually, when I wrote raw and radiant, I've done a hundred percent raw. I did it for two years and I have a lot to say on that, but, um, do tell, do tell <laughs> two years is a long time. I only, yeah, made it, six it was months. a long time <laughs> and it was wonderful. It was great. And, but this book is focused on food, beauty, and inner work. So it's like the trifecta because you really, I feel like so it was kind of the book I need to to help remind me of things in my life or practices or routines and rituals that are helpful to me to keep me balanced and healthy. 
and feeling enthused and then recipes that kind of correlate with that. So it's not 100% vegan. There are like some eggs included and some broths, but it is very, still very plant driven, plant inspired. So that's the difference. But yeah, the raw thing is probably a whole podcast in itself, the experience of that at least. I find that going raw is a really great way to cleanse the body. It it just doesn't seem like, I don't know if sustainable is the right word, but even being vegan in my humble experience seems like to do it for too many years, you start to see like things crop up in people's Mm -hmm. like long-term health. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. Like weird tumors or weird chronic conditions or, uh, you know, which, which kind of makes me think, hmm, maybe that's not all it's cracked up to be. I know from my experience being raw, like my body got really cold. And I remember going to a raw food festival in Sedona and we made this herbal tincture called liquid chi that I still take to this day because there are so many chilies and hot spices. Yeah. It's good for getting rid of a cold, but it was like <laughs> towards warming up the crowd. What, what did you end up feeling the same way after two years? Yeah, I did. So mine is like twofold. I, I started raw right after going through like kind of come like going hitting rock bottom with a lot of things so but one of the things was I had eating disorders and I was around 22 ish that was almost 11 12 years ago and I kind of just found my way into a juice cleanse and I went 100% raw after two weeks of juice cleansing and it was awesome for me because it helped me get to know my body in a different way it helped me get rid of the eating disorder at least in the way that it was being worked in that at, at that time, and it cleansed my body majorly. So I felt really amazing for the first like year and a half of it. And I know a lot of people say that it's just a continual cleanse. Then you'll maybe cleanse for ten years, uh, and maybe that's true. But for me, even living in a warm climate, I was in Encinitas at the time near San Diego, and I just became really weak. I was getting sick a lot. I couldn't gain weight even with eating nuts and stuff. So I was cold all the time. And we had stairs at that time in our house. And I couldn't walk up the stairs. So I was like way underweight and just unhappy. And like, so I remember just like changing it overnight because I just didn't feel good. And I think I had like eggs or something very simple. And within a week of like adding a little bit of just a little bit of animal products in and just warm cooked grains and broccoli, like steamed broccoli, I was pretty religious about it. So I wouldn't even do like steamed broccoli. And that's another thing, you know, that I think is a problem for me, not only speaking from my experience, is when you're so rigid in anything, I think that's just a reflection of rigid rigidness in other areas. So for me, it wasn't healthy to be rigid in my diet because yeah, things were starting to manifest because I had this rigidness, you know, things were in my life and in my body were manifesting to show me that. So I switched it and I really started to work with that rigidity that I had. And I'm so grateful that I did. And I still use raw all the time for cleansing or getting back to a baseline or during the summer and for healing, but it's not right for me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I imagine the same goes for 100% vegan. Like you don't advocate 100% vegan all the time. I don't. I don't advocate for any diet type, you know? I really just, and I talk a a lot about that and why in my new book, but I just, we're all so different. There's not one diet that can fit us all. And there's absolutely healing that can come from, you know, plant foods, but there's also healing that can come from animal foods, you know, bone broths. uh, Like my son just, he broke his leg and he had to get surgery. He's five and he had to be on antibiotics for the first time. And like all these, you know, things that you never want for your kid, but especially someone like me doesn't want for their kid. 
kid with the antibiotics and stuff. So I did bone broth for him because I could tell his under his eyes was like very dark and he had little skin eczemas after the, after the antibiotics. And within two weeks of having him on really good probiotics and doing bone broths, you know, it all cleared up. So I think there's healing in both, in both arenas. It's just knowing your body and knowing what, what you need. You do a lot of healing with food. What about healing with superfoods? And, you know, superfoods are like all the rage right now. Can you share some of your favorites? And when it's a lifestyle versus what we tend to do in the West, which is like hero ingredients, you know, like everybody's crazy about this. And then like, that's the best thing. And then like (laughs) something else. So maybe yeah. like, what are some of your favorites that you've sort of personally felt the most difference from and how you feel about the lifestyle versus heroes? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it definitely, I've seen, actually my mom, it's funny because she will, she'll like try something for a week or two and be like, it's not working. And then, <laughs> and then she'll stop, um, which she's getting better at now. But that that's kind of the thing is like when you want these things, these super potent superfoods that often, you know, you take in small amounts and they build up over time, you have to really give it a chance for your body to get used to it and absorb it and start using it. So I think it really is a lifestyle when it comes to actually using those for healing. And it's okay to just use them for flavors and try the trend out too. But I definitely use certain things consistently. My favorite ones, I mean, cacao. Thank God it's a (laughs) superfood. I love cacao so much. And, you know, the oxytocin, we all need it. And the cacao, sometimes we can't get oxytocin in all the ways that maybe would be the best. So getting a little cacao here and there is awesome. I like it in so many different ways. I put it in my tonic most every morning. I do collagen protein. I do marine collagen. I have been doing that for a while now and I've seen a major improvement in my skin and just my digestion. So that's one of them that I pulled up. I'm just going to try this for two weeks and it didn't work. And then I got more serious about it and I put it in rotation for like three months and now I've been using it for much longer, but that has helped me a lot, especially with my skin. Are you using it every day? Mm -hmm. I use it every day. For three months, and was, then after three months or so, you noticed a difference, just like smoothness? Yeah, like- it took me three months, just about, yeah, just like skin quality. And I love all the medicinal mushrooms. I love cordyceps, especially. There's a, there's a brand called Shaman Shack that I'm pretty much just obsessed with. Their sourcing and quality is amazing. And so all of their superfoods I have on rotation, but they have one called Morning Jing. And it has black sesame and black maca and black beans in it. And it has this really like great, I don't know, like I could just eat the powder. And I've been using that the whole entire pregnancy. And I don't know, that's probably my favorite like powdered superfood mm-hmm. is the morning jing. It's, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> so. But there's so many, like my husband, he loves the pine pollen because it helps with his allergies, but it's also really good for men's testosterone. So he's like a very competitive guy, <laughs> plays sports and stuff. So he wants good testosterone levels. And I think, you know, oh, barley grass and wheatgrass. Those are like, I actually juice those fresh every other day. I do like a two ounce shot. I, my godfather grows them. So I'm like really lucky with the hookup on that. <laughs> and he's like, a, he's beyond biodynamic. Like he filters the water that he waters them with. And like, he talks to them and everything. So it's like the best plants ever. So those, those ones, especially wheatgrass, because it has vitamin B12 in it, which I think is amazing. And it actually does have the bioavailable protein. Like it, it's plants are pretty cool. So you, I love the dilute it. Yeah, I put a little squeeze of lemon in it and sometimes a little water, especially in the wheatgrass because it's so sweet. Some people just sort yeah. of like, bleh, like kind of, yeah. Yeah, it can right? make you actually feel dizzy and nauseous. So it's best to like build your, build your tolerance up and mix it. The barley grass is much easier. <laughs> is it? <laughs> 
Yeah. What do you find at the local juicery are some of the most popular, like what's flying out the door? Like what are people super into? Oh my gosh. Well, we have this juice called the Monarch and it's celery, ginger, apple, and cucumber. People are obsessed with that. Celery juice in general is flying off. What is we don't even have celery juice? People, people are obsessed with the celery juice. The medical medium, I guess, started the craze. So we don't even have a label yet. It's being printed, but we've been making it for like a year and people just... Like we get bulk orders sometimes of the celery juice. It's supposed to help with stomach acid and digestion and just overall help. Honestly, I haven't tried it consistently. So I, I don't I can't speak is to that, that. I don't know anything about celery juice, just that it's a huge thing right now. Is it is there any culture in the world that it that has juiced with celery juice or eaten it raw a lot? Like I always see it in soups and bone broths. Yeah, and- you're right. That's a really good question. I like, don't know the really answer to that. Meant to be consumed that way? Ew. So intensely? <laughs> Every morning? It's, it's a lot. It's <laughs> a lot. It's, it's not for me. I'll do it like with other things, but I don't, I don't like it. And I like to like what I'm doing. I like to like what I'm doing. <laughs> like that's, that's important to me. Otherwise it's not sustainable. And of course there's like, you know, times when you need stuff that's it's not yummy, but I'm trying to think what else at local the waffles our waffles fly off the shelf people love the waffles they're like a really healthy indulgent food because they're gluten-free and processed sugar-free and we make it in the mall in house i haven't tried the waffles oh yes you'll have to I need next to come time to you're Sedona. Gonna make you a, i'll make you up so. <laughs> yeah i like that i love that so many of the things that you do aren't just good for you, but that they're also that this like sense of yumminess and decadence and deliciousness and like all of your milks, like the blue, like all of the colors that you, like the palette you work with. It just yeah. So the decadent. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, I guess just thinking about when I, when I first like got into food, like healthy food, I was just so excited that I could make healthy things out of plants that were decadent and delicious. I've always had like a bit of sweet tooth and love desserts and like yummy things. And so it was really, it's just so fun to have that, to have those healthy options. Yeah. I'm the person who comes to Sedona and then just drives right to the local juicery. And then (laughs) it's like six different juices and M- magical milks and magical then, milks I love it <laughs> like the you know chocolate avocado yummy puddings <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like, <laughs> all treats and juices <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> love the treats how has pregnancy shifted your outlook on food whether it's your first or your second pre- pregnancy oh man well with my first pregnancy I was mainly vegan And I think the time of year, it was like warmer and I was just like still in that mode of eating mainly vegan. I hadn't like gone too far into any animal products yet, but after pregnancy, I definitely needed, I needed bone broths. I needed grounding food. I needed warmth and healing. So that really shifted my ideas of what, you know, what a body can need, you know, it's not always the same thing. And with this pregnancy, I, this has been such a different pregnancy for me. The whole, the first three months I was sick, which I wasn't with Henry and I had cravings. Like I would wake up and I'd be like, Oh my God, I need like a Caesar salad with croutons and like, (laughs) like an actual, you know, deal. And then I'd like make that food and then I'd be over it. So I really like tried to respect my body's, what it was asking for, just making healthy versions. So it wasn't anything like, you know, donuts and pickles and ice cream or anything. It was mainly like <laughs> healthy stuff, but, but I really tried to honor it. And um, it's been really hard. Food has actually been really hard this pregnancy because um, you're supposed to get a lot of protein when you're pregnant, but I don't want any protein. Like, I don't want any. And so it's really hard to have, you know, something you know you need to be doing for your baby and your body, yet you're 
t- totally turned off to an, ent- an entire food group. Like the only thing I <laughs> want that's protein is like chocolate trees, stone ground on the butter. I'm literally like drinking it because <laughs> even protein powders to me are like disgusting right now. So collagen, bone broth, and chocolate tree stone ground almond butter but yeah it's just interesting to see that your body you know I have always really listened to my body and really tried to honor what it's telling me it wants and doesn't want so it's been a little bit of like I am confusing for me with this pregnancy and feeling like I don't want that at all but knowing that I need it so I've been in a little bit of a crisis How's your energy Interesting. Level? The second trimester, it definitely went up. The first trimester, I was like in bed a lot, very tired. And the sun's out now. We had so much snow in Sedona, which is, and I felt very just like I wanted to be inside and cozy and snuggly in bed. But I have a five-year-old, so that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, really good. Overall, really good. Energy levels. What kind of tips could you give to the listeners about listening to your body? Like, are you seeing what your taste buds are attracted to, what you're visually attracted to, how your belly feels afterward, the feeling of your digestion, like a day later, two days later, Mm -hmm. like how, especially in a world with so many different types of like food sensitivities cropping up, how do we listen to our bodies? Well, I I think that's, one of the reasons I loved raw food so much is because after doing the cleanse, it reset my palate, it reset my body, it reset my cravings, and my knowledge of what real food is changed. So I think that's like the most important thing is like, just because you're craving something doesn't mean that that is your body saying, I need this. So I know online, there's a lot of charts of like, if you're craving salty chips, you really are needing like magnesium or something along the lines of that. So I think if you're first starting and you haven't really delved into it much, doing like a simple, you know, three-day juice cleanse or something to just re, re get to baseline and get back to, you know, your body's actual knowing of what it needs. And a lot of people who do cleanses, we have cleanses at local and they'll, I have some people who do five to seven days and they'll come back with their experience and they'll be like, Oh my gosh, my cravings, you know, they changed so much. I'm not even wanting what I wanted before because we often crave what's in our system. So if we're eating, you know, Doritos and bagels and fried chicken, that's what we're going to crave. And so I think it's, it's really about cleansing but also being really aware of the difference between like ego mind and like real heart-centered feeling and thinking if that makes sense what do you recommend either from your own practices or at local juicery for a three-day juice cleanse when you're super busy so like yeah I used to do many years ago I used to do like one day a week fasting to kind of reset But I find that a little bit challenging in just the way my my life operates these days where I'm going a a lot, a lot of hours in the business. What are your thoughts about juice cleanses and kind of like operating your life as normal or should you, you know, block out a few days where you're lower energy output? Yeah. Well, the two things I would say with that is one, if you are going from eating a pretty standard American diet to suddenly doing a juice cleanse, that's going to be really challenging and you should block off time <laughs> and and have maybe a three-day pre-cleanse where you're cutting out dairy, sugar, gluten, alcohol, cigarettes, caffeine, so that it's not the, the cleansing detox symptoms don't bother you too much because they will because you'll start detoxing pretty quickly. I think that it is, if you are eating a pretty consistently healthy diet, as I assume you are, doing a three-day cleanse or even just a one-day juice cleanse is totally fine. The thing I recommend people to do is schedule a colonic and make sure you get that in there or do a home enema. I know people don't like to talk about poop, but 
it's like with cleansing, it kind of is important. (laughs) (laughs) And like, don't be too rigid with it. If you feel like you are just totally fading and you have to power through to a meeting, like eat some almonds and have an apple or, you know, like feed your body something. It's not going to ruin your cleanse. It just slows it a little bit. So to me, it's not about, oh, I'm going to do this three-day cleanse and I have to do it perfectly. It's just about like really supporting the body to feel good and making sure you get through it because you don't want to hate it and then never do it again. You want to enjoy it and give your body that opportunity. (laughs) How about the differences between sweet juices and more like green vegetable juices? Yeah, that's a really good one. I think there's kind of stepping stones. So I think the sweet juices, like we have three different cleanses and the get the glow is our first level. And that incorporates a lot of the sweeter juices because people who've never cleansed before, they kind of need that hand holding of otherwise it's just like, oh my gosh, I have to just drink these like super potent greens all day long. And Celery juice, three be, days long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it can be really intense. So So we like to like, we have three different levels of juice cleansing. And so the first one is super sweet. Second one is a combo. And the third one is just greens. Personally, I um, typically do more of just the pure greens. I feel like um, that is the most healthy thing I can do for my body. I like to eat fruit and, and enjoy it in other ways, but I'll also drink some of the sweeter ones, but I like them to still have veggies in them. So nutritionally speaking, the greens are always going to be the best. Have you heard anything about, this is like super detailed and, you know, almost to the extreme, but have you heard anything about like juices and smoothies having sort of like the frequency or vibration of a blender and how that can affect things versus just like eating an apple? Mm-hmm. I yeah. haven't heard it, but I I can see how people can go there. It, and especially like in Sedona, I'm surprised I haven't heard that. But I mean, that would go to me kind of like in that rigidity of like living. I'm only going to eat, you know, fruit that drops from the trees. Um, <laughs> like, because my, you know. Forest from the back alley. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, we are in modern life and I feel like it's okay to have stuff in a blender (laughs) and a juicer, especially like, I really believe in blessing your food and like, you know, energy matters and what you're preparing things with matter. And that's actually was, it's in our handbooks at local juicery. And it's something that we all talk about um, frequently, which is, you know, if you're having a bad day, that's going to go into the food. So let's talk about it before we start the shift. Let's, you know, if you're having issues come up, let's go outside and talk about it so we can clear the energy and make sure that we're giving just the most high vibrational energy to what we're making. And I notice that like if I'm in a bad space and I'm just cooking dinner because I have to, and I'm just like not present and not tapped in to my heart, then the food's blah. But if I'm really there and like, so I think putting things in blenders and then maybe giving it a little love from your heart and a good blessing is probably a nice happy medium. (laughs) How about your, any sort of tips or wisdom from um, running a juice business or just a business in general? Oh man, (laughs) there's so many. It's been such a learning experience for me. It's been really humbling and I've had a lot of experiences that totally tap my adrenals out. <laughs> like I'd say like if I could tell people like three things, I would say make sure that your passion is something that you want to work in because a lot of people think their passion is, you know, is something they love doing is going to be a really good business and they'll want to do all the aspects of it. And that can be really challenging. Like when I'm waking up at five in the morning because a juicer called in and I have to go and press juice or things like that happen in business all the time and the outside world doesn't see it, but that's what's going on. So making sure you're okay with that and that you can do the nitty gritty. Um, It's not just the fun part and getting everything in writing. 
I think is such a big one, especially for women, because we often just want people to think that we're nice and that we trust them and that we're, and I really had issues come up with that without not getting things that I needed to get in writing in writing. And then it coming back to hit me in the ass. <laughs> so, but I'm grateful because now I am so meticulous about that and I make sure that I'm covered and um, it's not because I'm, you know, being a bitch or expecting the worst. It's because I'm taking care of myself and I'm just preparing. And gosh, the third thing is your team, like the team of people you work with. And that to me is like, I spend, you know, a lot of time with the people that we hire. They are my, you know, they say you are the average of the top five people you spend your time with. My team are the people I spend the most time with. So it's really important that you have a good group of people around you that you really feel you can trust and who, you know, aren't perfect because none of us are, but are willing to work with you. And I feel so blessed because our team at both of our locations in Sedona and Flagstaff are marvelous and we invest in them and they invest in us. And it's been quite a blessing to, they're like family. So I feel like that's something that I would hope people going into business really consider is what you want to give to your team because you have to give in order to get from them. <laughs> How do you feel about firing? Oh gosh, it's so hard. <laughs> I just think that that's like the hardest thing in, in business, especially for women in business. Oh yeah, totally. And I used to want my husband to do it. I remember when we first opened and he's still like in California working and I'm living in Sedona, <laughs> like running a shoe store. I'm like, I have to fire this person. and I don't want to, but I've had to do it a couple of times and I've, tried to do it with as much heart as I possibly could and just letting them know the good things about them but also letting them know that it's not going to work for us and it's actually been less and less painless e painful each time so it's never something you want to do though yeah okay and then let's see like top three things that jump in your mind or favorite things about your raw and radiant book whether it's oh, concepts the or picture. <laughs> pictures. I love the pictures. We had so much fun. My good friend from LA, Alexa Gray, she's awesome. Um, we kind of were both newbies. Like she'd never shot a book before. We were just like, I'd never written one before. It was, it was so fun. We just shot at my house and we made all the things and it was so fun. And the pictures are really vibrant. And I think that's so important with a recipe book. Like you want to see the pictures. And she actually shot my next book that's coming out too. But I love the quick recipes. Like most of them are just things you can make really quick. And that was important to me. It was just providing things that were yummy and quick. And then there's some with more longer ingredients and that kind of thing. And also, I guess the desserts. I love the desserts. I feel like it's such an offering. <laughs> Here's how you can make uh, chocolate avocado pudding. There's some of the treats from local in there too, uh, like the carrot oh, nice. cake, the avocado pudding. There's also, sorry, this will be four, but there's a five-day cleanse in there that's really simple and it's smoothies and juice, so it's both. And people have really enjoyed that. And it was one of the cleanses I did uh, postpartum, like maybe six months after Henry was born. And I remember feeling so good after doing that. And, it's just like a simple five day or Ooh. yeah. I need to do that. And then the new book coming out. Any like yeah. little hints or teasers? Uh, well, Fun things? yeah, I love the, the inner work part of it um, because there's been so many different modalities and teachers and people who have supported me and just taking a little bit of each of those things and sharing um, about them and then giving good resources so people can dig deeper because I mean, I just feel like where was, I needed a list or a book like that when I was like 23 and going through so much and I didn't have a support system, you know, who was really supporting me or had even the support for themselves. So that's something I am really excited about, about this book. And the recipes are so fun. I have tested all of them like three times and they're, 
delicious. There's a banana bread in there that I can't wait to share. Gluten free. It doesn't have any sweetener in it. It's just sweetened with the bananas, but it's so good. And just lots of good, healthy food options that I rotate all the time in my home. There's like a kitchery that I'm obsessed with. I make it like once a week. And it's easy. You know, it's like stuff that isn't too challenging. You don't have to be a master chef. (laughs) And the beauty part I like too, because so many, as you know, beauty products and cosmetics have so many bad, bad things in them that disrupt our hormones. And I mean, I was in the cosmetology business for a while before I got into food and I'm just so sorry to my body (laughs) with what I put on it and in it. So I really had fun creating some of the recipes for like facial masks and body scrubs and oh, fun. oils. Yeah. Little body like uh pregnancy oil for your tummy and things like that. I love it. <laughs> and then just out of sheer curiosity, do you ever get because I know you carry our flower essences and yeah your juicery in Sedona, do you ever get people coming back with stories or saying like, oh, I tried this or? Oh yeah. We have people who love, like they really do like putting them in their water and it's, it's typically tourists who come in. And I think because they're already, their hearts, like, you know, they're in a different place and Sedona's miraculous. It's so beautiful. And you can't help, but like you're putting this beautiful flower essence in your water and then you're going on this hike, this expansive hike and like standing on the top of this mountain, <laughs> drinking this, you know, amazing water. And they do, they come back and some will like buy a lot to take home. Wow. You know, I, I, yeah, I remember, I'm remembering one lady who's just had like this great experience and she's like in the water, drinking it up on the top of the mountain. <laughs> and it was like a spiritual awakening for her. It was really sweet, but people love them. That's so great. And what's one ritual that you are kind of like lavishing on yourself during the second pregnancy? Oh, okay. I the t- I do two things that two I'm things. very like I do always. So alpha biotics is one, which is I go weekly and I've been going weekly the whole pregnancy with this lady named Alice Dell in Sedona. She's amazing. I think her company is called Align to Life, but it's a right left brain hemisphere balancing. And she does, um, tu- she uses tuning forks. And it has been anytime I have a headache or my back's out, she is truly a goddess. I love her so much. <laughs> She's changed, changed my body. And it's been especially helpful during this pregnancy because I was getting a lot of migraines. So, that and then also I do like a lavender body a lavender vitamin E and almond oil rub down three times a day on my tummy and my legs and that for me just feels so good I love it it's relaxing and those are pretty much the two things that I can fit in (laughs) so great is Henry excited he's so excited he's so sweet my friend this morning just texted me and she was like, I just saw your son because he's at my mom's little kindergarten and she has a little new baby. And she was like, your son just told me how cute my sling was. <laughs> so he's like looking at other people's slings and saying, that's cute. We have a stuff, a uh, feed scope. So he's been listening to the heartbeat. Oh, he's, he's very excited. We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. So he's just, he hopes it's a girl though. <laughs> when's your due date due date is june 21st oh wow, but we, we'll see yeah we'll see i carry two i usually my mom her mom two weeks early like they carry you know they always are two weeks early i was two weeks early with henry i came two weeks early so i'm just pretty much assuming that baby will come two weeks early but it'll decide what it needs wow cool and then any last words of wisdom or pieces of advice that you commonly find yourself sharing with others or just anything that kind of springs to your heart in this moment? Yeah, I think, let's see here. The topic that's been coming a lot up a lot in my life and other people coming to me is anxiety and our world is full of it. 
And uh, I've struggled a lot with it, especially with this pregnancy. But I think what I've been tapping into and what I've been supporting my friends and other family members who've been coming to me because they know I'm struggling with it is checking who it belongs to. Like, does that really belong to me? Is that really mine? And a mentor of mine always says, you know, when you ask that question, do you feel more space in your body? And often if you feel more space in your body, when you're asking that question, it does mean that maybe, maybe it's lineage or maybe it's the media or maybe it's something beyond you. Maybe it doesn't belong to you. So being open to letting that go and creating new patterns in that maybe this isn't mine and I'm going to give it back to who it belongs to. I always say I keep what belongs to me and I give back what belongs to others. Nice. (laughs) Love it. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. I know we, we, we wanted to do a giveaway. So how about we do a giveaway with your book and some flower? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that on Instagram. Thank you again for being with us summer. I really, really appreciate it. And for the listeners. Yeah. And for the listeners who come to Arizona, you have to go to Sedona and visit local juicery in person. It's a beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, come see us. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you, spending Katie. time. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to The Flower Lounge. I'm Katie Hess, and we'll be releasing a new podcast every Wednesday. If you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation, share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com.